Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by again. Today I want to show you how I render my charcoal portrait. It's been a while since that last video I put up where I did the line drawing for this. I had some camera troubles, but all set up now. So here I'm just about to transfer my line work to my final paper. I'm using some graphite transfer paper. Make sure that the graphite side is facing towards your final paper. And then just go over your lines on your tracing paper here. Make sure those lines get transferred. In the beginning of the drawing, I like to start by establishing my lightest value, which is that highlight in the eye, and my darkest value, which is that shadow by the neck. That way, those values help me compare and judge what every other value should be in the drawing. A word about transferring. You want to make sure not to transfer too hard or too light. You want to make sure your lines are dark enough for you to see, but not so dark that they show through your shading. And that's what happened to me. I actually pressed a little too hard, and you'll see me later on going and uh, erasing some things because they're showing through my shading. That sheet of paper I just put on the right there, I'm scribbling some charcoal on there. And then I'm loading my little makeup brush with some of that charcoal in order to get some more sensitive little tones. Charcoal is a very dark and bold medium, and it can also get out of hand really quickly. It can get very dark, very messy, very smudgy. So I find that it takes a lot of finesse to control it. And that's why I'm using things like makeup brushes and blending stumps. There I'm erasing one of those transfer lines that was too dark, but it's, it's not a big deal. I was able to go back over it with my brush and a little bit of charcoal powder and maybe a blending stump or something to smooth that out. Here I am wrapping a blending stump with my chamois and doing some little bit of erasing in the eye. There's kind of a hierarchy of erasing tools. I'll put the list up here. So things like erasers are gonna take off the most charcoal. Then a clean chamois takes off a little less charcoal, but still quite a bit. Then a clean paper towel takes a little less than that. And then a clean blending stump will take even less. So that's also something to consider. Once again, I talked about having finesse with putting the charcoal on. You also need some fine control with taking it off. You don't always want to jump right to those erasers and lift out a bunch of value. Here I've loaded that blending stump with some of that charcoal and I'm just drawing and putting some shapes on. It works very well to get some light sensitive shapes in your drawings. If you stick around after this is finished, I have some bonus footage for you. I wanted to show you some actual real-time drawing of an ear and that'll show more of these techniques in detail. Now I am using some charcoal powder out of a bottle there and I'm loading a larger makeup brush and blocking in some of the larger shadow areas. I bought a set of makeup brushes at a cosmetics center in my grocery store. It's nice to have some varied sizes and shapes of brushes to fit in those different areas in the face. The charcoal powder works really well for blocking in those large areas, but that also can get out of hand and get very messy very quick. So be careful with that. 
And also it does not leave the edge quality that I like as far as the final rendering. You can see on that hairline on the right and the shadow of the face, it's so soft and kind of poofy, it just doesn't look real. So I do go back and I firm up some edges to give it a more solid feeling. I'll talk about edges a number of times throughout this video. And edges are just vital when you're trying to do a realistic drawing. Don't forget to take breaks. The eraser also works as an excellent drawing tool. And if you've seen my video where I describe the products I use for charcoal drawings, you'll see some of those pencil erasers and electric erasers and things like that. So here in the hair, most of that is just lifted out value with one of those click erasers that I've sharpened. You can sharpen them just with a razor or X-Acto knife, get a nice edge on them, and then you can lift out those little hairs. So here's where I switched cameras. Now I'm going to be using my new camera and I had adjusted the white balance, but actually this is a little more authentic to the true color of the paper. Here's one of the dangers with working with charcoal powder or any kind of dry drawing medium. There was a dark spot, a few dark spots that showed up in the face and I think it was probably some areas that I had touched with my fingers and some oil got deposited there. That graphite powder or excuse me, that charcoal powder or graphite powder actually acts kind of like a fingerprint dusting powder. and when you put it on very softly like that with a brush, it'll pick up on those oils that are on the paper and leave some dark spots. So I had to try to erase it out and blend it out and, and smooth out those areas. So be very, very careful when you're doing a charcoal or graphite drawing. Be careful of how much you're touching your paper, where you're touching your paper. Honestly, it'd probably be safer to wear cotton gloves. Here is a horsehair brush. This works great for dusting off those little eraser shavings from your drawing. If you blow on the drawing trying to get rid of those, it doesn't always get rid of all of them and you might run the risk of spitting on your drawing. And then if you use your hand to wipe away those dust particles, then you may smudge your drawing. So that soft horsehair brush, which you can find in the drafting section of an art supply store, they work great for just dusting off those those little eraser shavings.
And once you're happy with your drawing, you can sign it. My signature is pretty basic, just kind of a cursive font that I use. My first initial and then my last name. So there you have it. That's pretty much it as far as this drawing. That's the final product. Thank you so much for coming to visit me again. But wait, there's more. As promised, I told you I would let you see some real-time drawing here on the ear. I chose the ear because, well, honestly, it's one of my favorite features on the face. Everybody's kind of got their favorites. Some people like the eyes or the nose or the mouth. Uh, one of my friends, Allie, her favorite part to draw is the neck. So everybody's got something that they prefer on the face. I just love the maze and puzzle of all those little cartilage pieces in the ear. And speaking of edges, we talked about edges earlier. The ear has pretty much any conceivable edge you could imagine in it. It's got everything from lost edges to soft edges to hard edges and sharp edges. And when you reproduce those edges accurately, it shows so much of the form. I guess that's why I'm such a fanatic for the edges. Edges, regardless of whether you're drawing or painting, are so important. They show that form. They make your drawing look three-dimensional and believable. If you have everything as very soft, fluffy edges, then it just doesn't look solid. If you have everything very sharp, crisp edges, it looks almost mechanical or geometric. So it takes a balance and a full range of edges, everywhere from very sharp to very soft or lost, and everywhere in between. For most of the ear, I use the blending stump. And you can see it's pretty versatile. You can get softer transitions with it, and you can also get some sharper transitions. As I work on the upper part of the ear, you'll see I get a pretty sharp edge there. It works really, really well. If you load it up with some of that loose charcoal, then you just drag it from one side to the other. The side you start on will leave a sharper edge, and then the side you drag to will have a softer edge. When I slowed down to show you that little bit of shading under the left eye, and I used the blending stump, you could see that technique. I dragged from the right to the left, so the right side had a sharper edge, the left side had a softer edge. There, right there, you can see I put a sharper edge in the ear with the blending stump. You'll see me flip the blending stump over. Personally, I like to use both sides. I use one side for when I'm blending darker areas, and then I try to use the other side for when I'm blending lighter areas or more subtle areas. If you take that side of the blending stump that you've been blending all those big dark areas with, and then you try to take that same end and go blend one of those lighter areas, then you're gonna carry a lot of that charcoal over to the lighter area and probably get a, a darker value than you want. I also have another blending stump I like to reserve for my white charcoal. And I was using some white charcoal in here. You could see a little bit on the nose and the eyes and the forehead, cheeks, chin, and left ear. If you use a blending stump and drag it through white and black charcoal, it creates a little bit of an odd third color, kind of a bluish tone, and it just stands out. So I try to avoid mixing the black and the white charcoal as much as possible. I may have already said this, but the reason I wanted to show you this and feel free to fast forward and skip. You don't have to watch this if you don't want, but I think it's really valuable to watch artists work in real time. The fast forwarding, the time-lapse videos, they kind of create this fantasy world where we just think everything is done so quickly. And uh, I think I may have mentioned this is about 10 or 12 hours of rendering the, the entire video uh, from start to finish was me drawing for about 10 or 12 hours, which in the grand scheme of things is not terribly long. I know some classical artists 
people spend 40, 50, 60 hours on one drawing. But that is a lot of drawing and it's all very controlled, like I'm working here. I'm not rushing through it. I'm just trying to render it as well as I can. There are other ways to do portraits. If you do a live model portrait where you only have an hour or two hours to draw, you kind of have to condense your process and move quicker. Many professional artists will be able to draw a portrait from life in about 45 minutes to an hour, and some of them will have broader approaches, not as refined, but some will be even more refined than this. I think it's good to practice drawing from photos and doing these long drawings like this. And I think it's also vital to practice drawing from life and capturing those, those things that you'll see from life that might not be there in the photo. I do find the need to go back with the pencil. You saw me using the pencil quite a bit in the face and even here in the ear. That is just kind of another refinement and sharpens and darkens some areas that need it. There's that chamois on the end of the blending stump again. That works really well. I like using the chamois just as is. Sometimes you can fold it up and get a little corner, but putting that blending stump under it helps it become more of a precision tool for doing some of that subtle lifting. So here's a great example where I would not want to use an eraser. I need some value there because that ear technically is in the shadow. And if I just grabbed my kneaded eraser, or my white eraser or my electric eraser, it would make it way too bright in the ear. As you draw, try to enjoy the process. Try not to stress yourself out or try to go too quickly. Speed will come with experience. Uh, I know sometimes we do have deadlines and some of my students might be watching and they have deadlines, but try to enjoy the process. So that's about it here. Thank you again for coming by and watching. Hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.